there was one person in the aviation industry who had the foresight to see that one of the most critical technologies, along with jet aviation technology, would be rockets. And that was Dutch Kendelberger, who was way ahead of everybody else. So just as they had used German technology to develop the swept wing, they now turned back to that German technology, and in particular the V-2 rocket, to push North American into an entirely new direction. Building on the V-2 rocket research pioneered by the Germans during World War II, Kindleberger reshaped his company's mission in the post-war era. In California's Santa Susana Mountains, he built America's largest propulsion field laboratory. We beat the bushes for the top men in rocket propulsion, electronics, and supersonic aerodynamics, said Dutch. By the early 50s, North American aviation was successfully developing a liquid rocket engine. A 1954 proposal to build a rocket research plane became North American's X-15 program. Designed to study hypersonic and spaceflight regimes, the X-15 became the critical step between the domain of jet aviation and manned space flight. The mission of the X-15, said Dutch, is to push itself out of date it rapidly did just that. Today, we're flying at very great speeds and at very high altitudes. The trouble that we are facing, the future, is not the sound barrier. We know how to fly through that now. The thing that is bothering everybody is the thermodynamic barrier. The air flowing over an airplane at these very high speeds by friction will heat up the surface of the airplane. As a matter of fact, if we go to Mach number two, which is twice the speed of sound at sea level, the surface of the airplane will get hot very rapidly and will stabilize at about 500 degrees. Well, since ordinary aluminum alloy loses half its strength by 350 degrees and that even titanium and steels begin to give trouble at 500 and 600 degrees, it's obvious that we are in a great deal of difficulty in the future. There also are many things like hydraulic fluid. We don't know how to make hydraulic fluid that won't boil away at this temperature. We don't know how to make packings that won't seize at this temperature, or bearings, or lubricants. So we have ahead of us a great deal of research and a long, long time of trouble before we're going to be going anything like the speeds at which our magazine supplement writers uh, seem to think we're ready for tomorrow.